welcome back to Classics. The main feature at this year's Concor Italiano is a relatively young company that has followed in the footsteps of the great Italian automakers, producing cars with a very distinctive style. Since 1959, Di Tommaso has attracted a loyal following of enthusiasts that treasure the unique style of its cars. Born in Argentina, Alejandro Di Tommaso fled the tyranny of the Perón regime in the 1950s. He became a factory race driver for Maserati and the Maserati-owned Oscar team. In 1957, he married Isabel Haskell, an American driver also racing for Oscar. Two years later, he and Isabel entered the car business, producing the first Di Tommaso. Forty years later, the company continues its tradition of unique, high-performance cars. Please. My wife, Linda, and I own this 1959 De Tommaso Formula 2. It is chassis number 0001. It's the very first automobile that Mr. and Mrs. De Tommaso manufactured, and this car was personally raced by the founder, Alejandro De Tommaso, at Sebring in 1959. The powertrain was an Oscar engine. The Oscar engine is a handmade, extremely valuable engine, and hopefully we'll find the engine that was out of this car someday. But it came with Fiat 1100 cc, what configuration is known as Formula Junior powertrain, which we have it in that state at the present time. It's a very, very light car, probably weighs under a thousand pounds. The suspension was not so uh, innovative as more or less similar to the Cooper. I believe that De Tomas was influenced by the success of the Coopers. Later on, this car was raced by um, Ed Hugas, very well-known race driver. He said he won quite a few races with the car, was extremely competitive. When we got the car, it was complete. The chassis was in excellent condition. We had it all uh, x-rayed and then everything was in fine shape and uh, all the parts have either been restored or replated or whatever and we've kept it as original as we can. Di Tommaso's expertise in constructing race cars provided a strong foundation for his pursuit of the street car market. In 65 he debuted the Vallelunga, the first production built mid-engine road car. A proud Vallelunga owner is renowned Mazda car designer Tom Matano. I work for Mazda and I'm the head of the studio for our U.S. operations and our studio produced the Miata, the RX-7, the MX-6, and Millennia and a Protégé. Vallelunga is a typical of a 60s like a Ferrari's in that typical Italian style. Very smooth and round and with a little ducktail in the back. Chassis is known as a backbone frame which is like a spine and all the suspension pieces engines come off that particular one and the body just sits on top of it if you take a body off it's like a race car underneath really suspension is pretty much the formula for it engine is 1.5 liter um de tomaso modified but really a cortina gt motor with a higher compression ratio horsepower known to be 115 and the good thing about it is only 1400 pounds so 115 horsepower should be sufficient. The top speed is close to about 130 miles per hour. The interior is typical of the era, just a speedo and tack and then oil gauges and pressures and uh, temperature gauges. But a very basic, but everything you need to know is there. I usually drive it to supermarket or hardware store on the weekends and people don't realize this is so rare. People think it's just a kit car. But the Vallelunga certainly is not a kit car. And before Tom could even drive his prized possession, he had some work to do. It took eight months just to get it running. Then the interior needed attention. All the interior is done by myself. Uh, engines, some pieces I had to send out, but a lot of things done by myself. Only thing I didn't touch were the brakes. So what's it like driving a 30-year-old classic? It's really exciting, you know, the good old days that you can smell the gasoline, the feel the vibrations, and a corner is flat, very flat, almost like on the rail. Um, and uh, acceleration is pretty neat because it's so light. So I say first 20 yard, I could beat anybody in the world. The Vallelunga was short-lived. Only 50 units were built. Then, Di Tommaso teamed with Ford and entered the larger market with the ultra-sleek Mangusta, a car designed to fill the void left by Ford's Cobra. 
The Jajario design is so provocative in its silhouette and bumperless layout. It is regarded as one of the best designs of the 60s. In 1969, I graduated from high school. Just whatever amount you And when this car came out and was featured in Road and Track and some of the other magazines, uh, I swore that someday I would be able to afford that car. De Tommaso picked the name Mongusta, which is Italian for mongoose, and used that name to, uh, to describe the car in hopes that this would be the car that would bring down the Cobra. The car was built in 1969. There were only about 400 built. One of the unique things is the gull wing rear engine compartment doors. And they're actually a, a double door assembly. What you have is uh, an, an exterior shell and hanging from that, uh, although rigid, is a engine cover. The design of the frame is, is uh, kind of a, a, a backbone type of design where you have a relatively small square tubing assembly which goes down the middle of the car. The concept of that was to allow the driver to sit lower. The disadvantage of it, uh, obviously, was that geometrically it was difficult to keep it from flexing and twisting. It's an independent wishbone suspension, uh, disc brakes on all four wheels. The steering is a very sporty wooden wheel with leather wrapping on on it. Uh, all of the interior is leather. Immediately behind the driver is the engine, although the engine noise is really not uh, uh, all that pronounced. It's got a uh, 302 Ford engine in it with a ZF five-speed transmission. About seven, eight years ago, had to strip the car down to bare metal, essentially rebuilt the car from the ground up. And it's, it's probably now as fresh as it was the day it came uh, off the factory, maybe even a little fresher. It's a very fun car to drive. Uh, the comfort factor is really the only compromise. As far as performance goes, it is a real kick to drive. Hey, stick around. Di Tommaso's Pantera, when classics return.